I understand that the issue of the death penalty is a very live issue in Taiwan. And I'm not going to comment at all on your debate. That is for the Taiwanese to decide. Uh, I'm a visiting judge, and I must respect your institutions here. So I'm not commenting at all, please. Uh, I can say, though, that in South Africa, when the new constitution came into force and the Constitutional Court was set up, our very first case was on capital punishment, 1995. And we were 11 judges, and we knew that this was an enormously important case. Uh, at that stage, we had about 400 people on death row, because during negotiations, the ANC, African National Congress, wanted the Constitution to abolish capital punishment. The old government wanted to keep capital punishment. We couldn't agree in negotiations, so we decided when we were negotiating to leave it to the Constitutional Court to decide whether or not capital punishment was consistent with the values of the Constitution. There are some countries in Southern Africa, uh, like Mozambique and Namibia, expressly abolish capital punishment. Other countries have terms in the Constitution that allow for uh, the death penalty, expressly or indirectly, saying that there shall be no, uh, no one shall be deprived of life, liberty or property except by due process of law. And then the question arises, is that compatible with the death sentence today? And um, in South Africa, we didn't even have that. So we had a completely open constitutional text. And we had argument for three days. The court was packed. And we knew it was very important, uh, not only for the people who were sitting waiting to hear whether they would be hanged or not, but for the country. What kind of country were we living in? Uh, what sort of state did we have? What did we regard as being permissible in the new South Africa? Uh, we don't discuss our cases in advance in the Constitutional Court. We have the arguments for abolishing capital punishment, the arguments for retaining capital punishment, uh, reply, abolition, and then we retire. And that was the first time sitting around the table we got the opinions of the judges. And it was very clear, very early on, we all felt that capital punishment was inconsistent with the kind of democracy that we wanted in the new South Africa. There'd been so much violence in the past from the state, so much disrespect for human life, that the idea of the state itself cold-bloodedly taking life just seemed to be a relic of the, the past regimes. Uh, the deputy head of our court, Ishmael Mohammed, actually commented, he said that there are some constitutions that simply slowly, incrementally, um, uh, that, that represent a slow incremental advance of human rights, and they maintain that level. There are other constitutions that represent a radical rapture with the past. Ours represented a radical breakaway from the world of apartheid, the world of division, the world of hatred, the world of disrespect for humanity, to a society based on caring, uh, on, on sharing, uh, on mutual responsibility. And uh, so for him, capital punishment was inconsistent with that, with the new values of, of, of the new South Africa. In the end, in the Makwanyani case, we had one main judgment from the head of the court, became Chief Justice, and 10 concurring judgments. And we gave different reasons, different rationales. But I think the underlying theme in all of them was the sense that uh, it, it is inappropriate in a modern democratic society for the state to kill. It's a contradiction if you want to increase respect for life and reverence for life, if the state then cold-bloodedly takes the life of uh, its citizens, uh, it's somehow introducing a level of sanctioned violence into the society. Uh, it's not simply the rights of the killer that, that are involved, it's what is it doing to the state that everybody in the state becomes implicated in, in, in killing. 
I think this was underlying a lot of the, the reasoning. A term that was used a lot by, uh, I think, six of the, of the 11 judges was Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. It's an African concept that expresses human interconnection. I am a person because you're a person. I can't separate my humanity without uh, some connection and respect for and acknowledgement of your humanity. And my colleague said that to cold-bloodedly extinguish the life of another human being is a violation of that principle of Ubuntu, whatever that other human being has done. Uh, so for different reasons, that was the unanimous decision uh, in our country. I wouldn't say there was dancing in the streets. Uh, it wasn't a popular decision, but the decision was respected because we gave our reasons for it. Uh, and we made it clear that our job is not simply to follow public opinion. Our task is to uphold fundamental rights in keeping with the basic value system of the Constitution. So I think people might have been happier if we'd come out in a different way, but I think they had more respect for the court and respect for the Constitution as a result of, of, of that decision. It's one thing to know deep in your conscience that capital punishment is just wrong. It's another thing to find the legal language to convey the principles that are, are involved and to write a coherent judgment that establishes the foundation. So the one argument was a very, uh, fairly pragmatic one, that capital punishment is very drastic, there can be mistakes, uh, and there was no proof to our court that capital punishment was significantly more powerful as a deterrent than the prospect of being caught and spending many, many years in jail. So the one argument, the principal argument was, it cannot be justified on a proportionality analysis, given the dramatic outcome and the social value that it serves, that can be served equally well by long imprisonment. I was not happy with that alone. I agreed with that, but to me, the foundation of my opposition went beyond that. It was respect for life, and if the state kills and takes life, even if it deters other people, for me that, that would not justify capital punishment. And each one of us had our, our, our separate reasons. I might mention it's an issue that reaches very deep inside you. Uh, I remember when I was preparing my, my decision, I, I played music late at night uh, and, and I was playing a lot of Beethoven, powerful, deep, profound music, uh, and I got a note from my neighbours next door saying, we love your choice of music, but at two or three o'clock in the morning, that's a bit much. Uh, they put it very delicately, so I, I, I softened the music afterwards. Uh, but I needed that music because somehow you're dealing with life and death. It's not a technical issue. It's an existential question. And I can accept, although I feel personally very strongly, that capital punishment violates something profound in terms of my vision of what a just society should do, uh, that it, it's some, something very full of vengeance and, and it has a primitive quality uh, that, that is holding humankind back and it also provides a shortcut pretense that you are solving the problem uh, and it, it, it limits you looking for alternative means of dealing with the violence and the killings and the things that, that require appropriate uh, state responses. And nevertheless, I have to acknowledge there are people who believe in capital punishment uh, with great sincerity. It's not one of those issues where you, you um, divide the world between the enlightened and the backward people. Uh, it, it's just an issue of profound philosophical significance 
and it so happened everybody appointed to our first court to uphold the constitution uh, in our new democratic South Africa, we all just felt capital punishment violate something profound, uh, something basic to the very nature of the civilization, the culture, the humanity that we felt we needed in the new South Africa.